But there's more. Just like these jets, the brooches have delta-shaped wings. There is a rudder clearly shown. And, quite astonishingly, ailerons. All of these features are found on modern aircraft like the space shuttle. This golden model has thus left a fascinating mystery. Could this be a model of an aircraft that actually existed? Did the ancient Kimbayans understand how to fly over 1,000 years before the first recorded flight? Peter Belting is an aerodynamics expert. With the, he has been fascinated with the enigmas surrounding the Kimbayan's golden insect. By constructing a 16 to 1 scale model of the artifact, he planned to unravel whether this stunning brooch was more like an insect or a supersonic modern aeroplane. You have to find out during the flight, the first flight and so on, where is the center of gravity, uh, what, is, uh, what, what shape the rudder have to have, and so on, it's flying or not. The results are stunning. What was once dismissed as a piece of jewelry modeled as an insect actually flies more like a 21st century aircraft. We know about 20 of, of these similar artifacts and uh, they are something all the same shape, but we don't know the actual purpose of that. Peter Belting's pioneering research is causing us to reevaluate the accepted story of how mankind conquered the skies. But the true origins of the oldest flying machine may yet prove to be even earlier. In a charge, the iron rod acts as the positive terminal in the battery, and the copper tube acts as the negative terminal. The battery quite clearly registers an electrical charge of approximately one volt. There are many various theories as to what this electrical supply could have been used for, from medicine to religion, Yet some question if it was used to generate power at all. And the Baghdad battery is one of those great stories. But for me as an archaeologist, I'm afraid it doesn't quite work. Yet there is one theory which many experts believe is the most likely use of the Baghdad battery. The Baghdad battery didn't produce much power, perhaps a little over a volt, but that would have been sufficient to allow silver to be plated with gold. What the Baghdad battery shows then is that electroplating is another ancient discovery. It is thought that the practice of electroplating one metal over the top of another is a modern invention. Yet with the Baghdad battery, perhaps the ancients had also mastered this art. The gold in the solution is attracted to the coin, and in only a few minutes, the coin has been completely coated in gold. The Baghdad battery seems to prove a remarkable theory, that people living thousands of years ago were able to generate small amounts of electricity. Yet when you look back at the astounding technical achievements from the ancient world, from the ancient Greeks, Romans, and Mesopotamians, many of their inventions seem remarkable and highly sophisticated. The ancients realized that it was possible to exploit natural forces in many ways and even create automated machines. Many inventions were lost for thousands of years until they were reinvented in modern times. It is intriguing to imagine what other ancient discoveries are yet to be revealed. Egyptians developed a model for a full-size flying machine. Which is not quite the same as a modern-day wing, but as a shape that will give some type of aerodynamic properties. Theory. The Saqqara bird has provoked this fascinating discussion as to whether the ancient Egyptians did actually know how to fly. Because we haven't got a tailplane on this glider, we have no pitch control, it dives down, rolls over, and then just... Feeding this new data into the flight simulator, Simon will carry out the final test flight of the Saqqara bird. The As the pilot takes the controls, the model begins to climb towards the heavens. The Saqqara bird glides effortlessly high above the Egyptian plateau, riding the air streams like an eagle. 
Over 2,000 years after the ancient Egyptians carved this mysterious bird, modern technology has proved beyond doubt that it could have flown. It was incredible. And the Egyptians had very sophisticated knowledge in, in other areas, um, so why not in aerodynamics as well? Could the Egyptians have stumbled unwittingly into a brilliant design, never realizing its incredible aerodynamic properties?